Always love having Shane Battier on the show. And he's really good to me. And that's the truth. Now, I'm, I'm not kissing ass there. I've told him before. I've told you guys before. It's my all-time favorite Miami Heat performance. You know, Zazzle, how could that be your favorite? I just... It... it, it it, it has such, I don't know, I, I felt the emotion in that game. So you got you to gotta remember, it's Game 7, 2013 Finals. He finishes 6 of 8 from 3. I think he was 5 of his first 5. And you got to remember, and, and it's not like, it's not just that he hit all the 3s. I mean, hell, Mike Miller, the year before, had 6 threes as well in the Game 5 closeout game against Oklahoma City. Granted, one game was a blowout. This game was super tight. That's part of it. All 6 of Shane's 3s were enormous, needed all of them. That's part of it. But really, his story was unbelievable because he really struggled late in the seat, really struggled in the playoffs. He got benched in the finals. He got DNP, coach's decision. That's never happened him before. And then in game six, coach gave him a shot. He played a little bit, knocked down a couple threes. All right, let's see what we got. So game seven, he was back in the starting lineup. Coach went back to him. All right, let's see what you got, Shane. Let's see if you've snapped out of this funk. And he starts five for five. He hit six total threes. And and there was one moment, like after he hit the fifth one, I think, and he's five for five. The game was so close. If you remember that game seven against San Antonio, classic game. And he was running up the court and, and his, his fists were clenched and, and he was so pumped up. And it just, in that moment, you know, it was, I, I, I felt all the emotion. And of course, when the game was over, he was like almost on the verge of tears in center court. And it was an, it was just an incredible emotional turnaround for him going from that to that. And, and of course, they don't win that game without his performance. I mean, obviously. So it's my all time favorite Miami Heat performance. Shane Battier's game seven, 18 points, <coughs> excuse me, six of eight from three. I, I love it so much. Let me tell you about one of our new sponsors. Let's talk about favorites. I had no idea what to expect when I first walked into Broward Meat and Fish, all right? So let me tell you a little bit about our newest sponsor, Broward Meat and Fish. If you love good food, stop everything you're doing. We all love good food. What am I even saying? But we all want the best quality when we're prepping our next meal. Broward Meat and Fish. This is your one-stop shop for not just fresh meat and fresh seafood, the best selection of meat and seafood I've ever seen. I wasn't prepared when I walked into Broward Meat and Fish for the first time. Their newest location, you can find the location nearest you, BrowardMeatAndFish.com. They got three locations, Margate, that's the newest one, Pembroke Pines right by me, North Lauderdale as well. But when I walked into their newest location in Margate, grand opening a couple weekends ago, I had no idea, I'm talking a Full supermarket here. Complete selection of groceries, frozen foods, freshly prepared hot food, deli meats. They'll make you a boar's head sub right there. Wines, cheeses, so much more. I was there with Johnny Cuba a couple weekends ago. My man Juan, hey, don't forget, pick up your Johnny Cuba picante sauce made with the finest Jamaican peppers. That's at Broward Meat and Fish also. You know what I'm talking about. But you get everything you need at Broward Meat and Fish. The butchers and fishmongers at their full-service meat and seafood counter, they're going to prepare your selection exactly the way you want it. You get the perfect cut. You get the freshest flavor and quality. And here's also what I love about Broward Meat and Fish. They have specialized in serving the Caribbean and Latin community here in South Florida for over 30 years. Broward Meat and Fish offers all the products that remind all of us where we came from. The shelves are stocked with international brands from including Jamaica, Haiti, Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, Peru. You're getting the flavor that you love at Broward Meat and Fish, making you feel like you're right back at home. BrowardMeatAndFish.com, newest location, Margate, newest sponsor on the show. So everybody give it up for Broward Meat and Fish. Love them over there. Let's get to big deal or not a big deal. You know how we wrap every show with the big stories that we haven't been able to get to earlier in the program. Big deal or not a big deal. Trevor Bauer, uh, disgraced pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. They waived him a couple months ago. His suspension was up. They waived him anyway. You know, I got that uh, sexual battery type of case. The, the charges were not filed, but we all know what happened. You saw the pictures. He's saying it was consensual. She's saying it wasn't. Can't be proven, so it is what it is. He signed a one-year deal in Japan. This is a big deal to me because 
Major League Baseball, they're actually holding up certain standards. You figure there'd be one team out there that would say, yeah, we'll sign you. Nope, there hasn't. He's off to Japan. That, to me, is a big deal. We'll see what the NBA does with a, with, with a guy like Miles Bridges, who's still a free agent out there from the Charlotte Hornets, who pleaded no contest of beating up his, his wife in front of the children. Terrible. LeBron's yucking it up with him on the sidelines, you know, because he's with Clutch. If you're with Clutch, this kind of behavior is okay. We'll see what the NBA eventually does if they take, take the same tact as Major League Baseball teams. Big deal or not a big deal? Big road win last night for the Milwaukee Bucks in Sacramento. Late in the game, Giannis is dribbling out the clock, and Trey Lyles from the Kings kind of behaving like an asshole, tries to, like, steal it from him, which there's 15 seconds left. You're down by nine. Let him dribble out the clock. And it ends up with him shoving Giannis, and so obviously that's not going to be accepted. 20 seconds left. The, the Kings let the clock run out. Woo! <laughs> I mean, Bucks were down by 15. Come back to be up by 11, but look at, uh -oh, oh no. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. oh, look at this. You don't want that to happen in a game like this. Yeah. Oh, wow. It started with Lyles coming at Giannis. Brooke Lopez was not here for it and confronted him. Tension running high. An emotional basketball game. I mean, right in front of us, it was the initial shove by by Trey Lyles and, and Brooke Lopez standing up for his team. Yeah, Trey Lyles behaved like an asshole in this spot. So Brooke Lopez, of course, is going to get angry. And he is scary when he's mad, that Brooke Lopez. Lopez and Lyles obviously get ejected. I mean, hell, there was only a few seconds left in the game. But this is very poor behavior out of Trey Lyles. Can't defend it. I'm going big deal. Big deal or not a big deal? Like I mentioned there with Shane, first four. You know, essentially the play-in for the NCAA tournament. <coughs> that begins tonight. This is not a big deal to me. I can't treat the first four the way that I do the game starting on Thursday. Like, this is not must-see TV tonight. 16 versus 16, 11 versus 11. I know Pitt's one of those teams, the 11 seed. I I'm, I'm not that into it. Maybe I'll maybe get small TV status here in the Zaslow Mansion family room. I don't know. I do like, though, that they don't call it first round anymore. Remember that garbage a few years ago? This is not the first round. You want to call it first four? Fine. It's not the first round. Don't ever do that again. So I'm going not a big deal. Big deal or not a big deal. So you may remember, this is like a month ago. Stephen A. Smith on first take and Jay Williams, they went at it. And it felt, it felt like there was a lot of animosity. Jay Williams was accusing Stephen A. Smith about making it personal about Kyrie Irving. Stephen A. Smith was very offended with Jay Williams taking that tact. And Stephen A. Smith admitted yesterday that he does have personal beef with Kyrie Irving and his father. Stephen A. Smith admitted, he goes, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but his daddy knows what it is. I'm, here's the thing, though. I'm going not a big deal. Just because Stephen A. Smith has personal beef with Kyrie Irving does not mean that he cannot speak unbiased about Kyrie Irving. You can dislike, I mean, hell, I don't like, I don't like Kyle Lowry. I told you earlier in the show here today, I thought he had a very good game last night. I cannot like the guy and still be unbiased. Same thing for Stephen A. Smith. He can have personal beef with Kyrie Irving and his father and still be able to speak from an unbiased perspective if he so chooses. So I'm going not a big deal. Finally, big deal or not a big deal? Oh, last night, we're on the road to WrestleMania. Monday Night Raw last night. By the way, if you go to my Twitter account, at Zaslow Show, you'll see we started the ultimate WrestleMania bracket for my wrestling show. It's still real to me. That's posted the bracket, 32 teams, seated one through 16 on one side, one through 16 on the other side. 32 Ultimate WrestleMania moments it's for you guys to vote on. The bracket is posted on my Twitter, at Zaslow Show. And also, we're putting the brackets on my Twitter timeline. You could vote right now. There, the, the polls are open. I put 
four first round matchups last night. The polls for those are open for a few days. I'm going to post four more tonight. So we need you guys to vote. Go vote and we'll continue to update the brackets. Anyway, last night, Monday Night Raw, Edge and Finn Balor. We know they're fighting at WrestleMania. It's going to be hell in a cell. That's a big deal. Triple H, he done get rid of. He done get rid of. Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. He wants to make it special again. A a actual Hell in a Cell fight. How do you make it special? You have a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania. That's a big showdown between Edge and Finn Balor. I love it. That's a big deal. Are we going to see the demon? Finn Balor make a return? Whoa. I don't know. I can't tell the future. We'll find out April 1 or April 2, night 1 or night 2. I don't know which night this match is going to be. But Edge versus Finn Balor, Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania 39, that's a big deal. And that right there is another addition. A big deal or not a big deal. Yes! All right. So, no Heat basketball tonight. The Heat are back in action tomorrow. They host Memphis. The Panthers, they don't play again until Thursday where they're hosting Montreal. So all these other teams like Pittsburgh, who had all these games in hand on the Panthers, that's all going to be evened out by Thursday. And we're going to have a furious race to the finish for these two wild card spots. That's what we got going on here this evening. All right. Excellent job by everybody who put together a great show today. Appreciate all your hard work. Thanks, of course, to Shane Batty. That's my guy. He's always really good to us. If you want to get involved in the show, you can email at uh, uh, jonathanzaslow at gmail.com. The email is also there under my Twitter bio, which is at Zaslow Show, of course. If you want to partner up with the program, we got a couple new sponsors starting at the end of this week. I'm very excited to tell you guys about them. Looking forward to getting them on board, and we'll see what happens moving forward. All right, we'll talk to you on Zaslow Show 2.0 tomorrow. Know what that means.